Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Erin Noon and you're watching 13 News Now. Welcome to 13 News Now. We're going to be coming here to you live every weeknight at 9 p.m. right here at the WOWK Charleston, West Virginia TV studios for 13 News at our new digital desk. Well, we're going to jump right into things here. Louisville police are in will fire one of three officers involved in the shooting death of Brianna Taylor. Mayor Greg Fisher made the announcement to fire officer Brett Hankinson during a news conference. Hankinson is accused of blindly firing 10 shots into Taylor's apartment as she slept on March 13th. The emergency medical technician was killed after officers forced their way inside her home. The mayor put off the move while repeatedly saying he was not able to take action on the case. An attorney for the family says today's announcement shows the mayor can take action and hopes he will do the same with the two other officers involved. Well, West Virginia continues to have more COVID-19 problems related to churches. At the Governor's daily briefing, it was announced that an outbreak at Gateway Baptist Church in Greenbrier County has now spread to people at other community churches. In all, 34 positive cases are linked to churchgoers. People were reminded again to follow the state guidelines for worship services, such as staying six feet apart and wearing masks. Well, today is, June 19th, today is Juneteenth, or June 19th, and it's the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. Our own 13 News reporter Cassidy Wood was just at a community Juneteenth celebration on Charleston's west side. Cassidy, tell me what you saw today. Well, Erin, it was honestly such an, a moving experience to see the kind of turnout that was actually came out today. Uh, they had several speakers from different pastors. The event was put on by the Coalition of Churches, which is a new uh, thing that they're starting here in Charleston, uh, just to bring all the churches together and put on events that would make the community become more involved uh, and stuff like that. So today was actually their first event as the Coalition of Churches. And it, I would say it, it went pretty successfully. They had several speakers, like I said, that were pastors uh, from different churches. They also had a bunch of food that people could eat, pulled pork sandwiches. They had a gorgeous unity cake um, and they had live music, which was awesome. And then after all the speakers and everything at about seven o'clock, uh, they started marching down. So it was at Risen City Church over on Fourth Avenue and people just started marching down Florida Avenue. You guys probably saw them out there around seven o'clock. It was a pretty big crowd uh, coming down Canal Boulevard. So a pretty awesome event. We'll actually have the full story for you guys tonight uh, at 11 o'clock on Channel 13. So a full wrap up of today's events. But yeah, it was overall yeah. Think, really good. What was like the thing that stuck out most to you? Well, I think the thing that stuck out the most was I spoke to a man who was born and raised in Fayette County, actually, but has lived in Charleston for 40 years. And so he shared with me just kind of, you know, the experiences that he has had as an African-American man in our own community over the last 40 years and how much it's changed um, over those 40 years. And he said, you know, a lot of positive things about our area and how we have progressed in the 40 years that he's lived here. But he says there's still a lot of room for improvement. And I think that we're seeing that kind of force, that change uh, and that push for change right now, not only nationally and across the state, but in our city as well. And I, I experienced that firsthand tonight. So um, you guys want to tune in at 11. I don't think you'll want to miss yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure. definitely going to tune in. I'm excited. Cassie, <laughs> yeah. thanks for covering that. We're excited oh, to yeah, see the full of story. Course, of course. <laughs> thanks for having me on 13 News Now. 13 News Super Now, aka noon at 9. Yeah, yeah. there we go. I so, love it. I yeah. love it. Well, good job. Guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. Well, speaking of top trending stories, we're going to see what's going on on our website right now. Um, you could see your state's COVID-19 risk level. I'm sure that's still a major concern for many people. And many people who aren't even in West Virginia can now go to WOWKTV.com and still figure out how their state's doing when it comes to COVID-19. Also, COVID-19 cases were linked to Myrtle Beach, now found in three West Virginia counties. We talked about that yesterday, and that's still obviously a big concern for people here in our viewing area. Now, also, Fitzpatrick was sentenced in Mingo County, and you can find out all of those details. Just head over to WOWKTV.com for the full stories. Welcome to... 
Now we're going to actually head over to Storm Tracker 13 meteorologist Joe Fitzwater, who is in our weather lab right now. Joe, how is the weekend weather looking? Well, I think, Aaron, overall, things aren't looking too bad out there. Are you getting tired of some of the rain showers that have been around the area? A little bit. I'm just sick of rain. I don't know. Like, it's always hot and cold. You just never know what you're going to get here. So Yeah, I've kind of gotten a trend that you like to complain about certain things. You were talking about the, the humidity yesterday with the frizzy hair. Did you get yeah. tired of the rain today? Well, right. I, I do have good news. We are okay. looking at so much better it. weather here as we head toward the weekend. So let's take a look at what's going on right now here across the region. I'm meteorologist Joe Fitzwater. We do have a flash flood warning that's in effect for the West Virginia Mountain Counties of Webster County and Randolph County. That goes until 11 o'clock tonight, folks. So we're talking about um, an area of mostly to our east here, but we do get a few viewers over in this area and this area in general has picked up around two inches of rain in some spots. We're talking about areas like Webster Springs. Uh, up toward the east here, toward the Mill Creek area there across parts of southern, uh, southern Randolph County. And this extends farther up to the north toward Holly River State Park. But you look back to the west on our rainfall total map, and you can see we haven't picked up too much here, really across a good chunk of the region today. And I think that's going to translate into tomorrow as well. We could see a couple of isolated storms. I think best chances, once again, though, will be over the West Virginia mountains. But I think many of us are going to be dry here, not only for your Saturday, but for your Sunday as well here across the region. Let's take a look at some of those temperatures. And we have cooled down a good bit here. We're at 74 degrees in the capital city. We're at 75 in Ripley, 75 in Portsmouth. And you can kind of tell where we have seen some of the rain showers, where we've seen some of the cloud cover. We have those temperatures down into the 60s here across the West Virginia mountains, 67 in Webster Springs, 68 in Fayetteville. It's 67 over in Pineville there in Wyoming County. But where we've seen the sun, it's still close to 80 degrees across parts of eastern Kentucky in places like Vanceburg. And uh, we do see some big changes here taking place. Of course, if you've been tuning in uh, to Chief Meteorologist Spencer Atkins in the evenings or Brian Hughes in the morning, you've been hearing about that lousy upper level low that's been causing all the problems in terms of rain showers and thunderstorm activity. And the good news is it is finally kicking itself out of the region. So with that, our main chances for showers and thunderstorms will be decreasing. Now, we could see a brief shower or storm pop up over the West Virginia mountains, mainly tomorrow, maybe even down toward the hilltops of eastern Kentucky with the combination of heat and just a touch of humidity. But most of us are going to stay dry. Let's take a look at predictor here for the remainder of this evening. Things really shutting down here. These storms pretty diurnal in nature, meaning that they kind of die as the sun's energy goes away with its setting. So I think overnight, the main thing we're going to have to worry about is going to be the risk for some patchy fog to develop. And some of this could be a little bit on the dense side. So something to keep in mind here as we're waking up for your Saturday morning. But as we head into the afternoon, a couple of pop up showers and thunderstorms. Nothing major here. And again, most of us are going to be dry, especially I think if you're in southern Ohio, if you're uh, along the Ohio River, I think you're going to be dry here for your Saturday and the mercury will reflect that. We're going to see those temperatures warming up into the mid to perhaps upper 80s in some locations. We'll see those showers and thunderstorms die away once again Saturday night. Again, a good shot chance of uh, some patchy fog being possible here for your Sunday morning. And then by the afternoon again on Sunday, maybe a brief shower or thunderstorm. I think predictors got this a little cooked, but or overcooked, I should say. But as we head toward Monday, we'll start to see our chances for rain and thunderstorms increase once again. That's going to be due to a cold front that's going to be approaching the region. And so with that being said, our chances of rain will once again be on the rise. Your seven day forecast looks like this. Temperatures kind of warming up here. We'll be up toward 90 degrees here on Sunday. So again, don't forget about the sunscreen. The UV index will be high. Take plenty of breaks if you do plan on being outside, practicing uh, safe social distancing, I hope. And then as we head toward next week, unfortunately, the chances for rain will certainly be on the increase, especially by Tuesday into Wednesday. Those highs will drop as a result, but we do look to dry out as we head toward the end of next week, Aaron. So it's a little bit of everything here for everybody over the next couple of days. Uh, and as we head toward next week, just a little bit of uh, very summer-like weather that's going to be dominating here in the tri-state in Ohio, Kentucky, and West Virginia. Definitely interesting, but we do have some good weather looking towards our weekend. And are you doing anything with your father on Sunday for that nice weather? Uh, well, I don't want, in case he's tuning in, I don't want to spoil it, but uh, th there could be something in, in the eatery department that uh, we're <laughs> going to be focusing on. Could have something to do with a grill. So I'm going to leave it at that, though. What about All you? Right. 
Well, we're looking forward to your for forecast over the weekend as well. So thanks for joining us, yeah. Joe. We'll talk to you later, okay? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for 13 News Now. Thank you all so much for joining us. Download our 13 News app for everything local and breaking. And make sure you join Rob, Lily, and Spencer on 13 News at 11. Have a great night and a great weekend. We'll see you here again on Monday at 9 p.m. That's it for 13 News Now.